Hey everyone, welcome back to Tactical Magic. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I'm excited to bring you a second edition episode today. So I've had the magical Lisa Simone Richards on the podcast before earlier in 2022. You're welcome to go back and listen to that or watch that episode first if you like, but today we're going to take it a little bit deeper. So hang tight for just a sec and we'll be right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Lisa Simone Richards is a PR and visibility strategist for coaches who want to get more eyes on their business. Through her free workshops, masterclasses, and mentorship program, she gives you the insider secrets on how to get exposure and reach more people without spinning your wheels on social media or wasting money on Facebook ads. Her clients learn the lather, rinse, repeat formula for more visibility, which makes them more sales. They go from invisible to in demand, getting interviewed on top podcasts, partnering with big names in their industry and building their authority expert status, getting featured on major media outsources like Fox, NBC, Forbes, Inc., et cetera. So last time we talked a lot about sort of the why, why do this? Why bother getting exposure? Why take this the tact of getting onto podcasts or getting your name in the media, obviously, because it does build that credibility. But this time we want to take it a little bit deeper. So welcome to the show, Lisa. Molly, I'm so excited and honored to be back for a second time. Thank you so much for having me. And just for everyone listening, like just six minutes of chatting with Molly before turning on like vibe up energy up. I've been so excited for this conversation. So I'm so excited to be able to share with your listeners again. Yeah, so happy to have you here again. So give us the synopsis of we we talked a little bit about why, but basically, what is it? What are we talking about here? We're talking about getting exposure, getting your name out there. What are some of the ways that your clients are doing that that maybe they weren't doing before working with you? Yeah. So in my experience, a lot of people in the online space are really familiar with two types of media. And we probably went over them briefly in the last time, but let's do a little reintroduction for those just catching up. Um, my experience is most people are really familiar with being on social media, which is powerful. We have our own platform. We can communicate the way that we want to. We can DM leads and clients. Most people are familiar with Facebook ads where, you know, I, I don't do well running them myself, but I hire an agency, share the target that I want to get in front of, and then they're able to run the ads. But I find a lot of people are aren't taking advantage of earned media. And this is when you leverage somebody else's platform, show up as an expert and contribute your knowledge. And that's a great way for people to find you. So what that looks like, what it can look like, even if I break it down into three different contexts to make it make sense and give it a container, is you can reach other people's audiences and grow your exposure by getting people, getting exposure, sorry, on other people's written platforms, their audio platforms, or their visual platforms. So that's that could look like um, contributing a guest blog to somebody else's site instead of writing on your own, contributing contributing an article to an external website, maybe being a guest on a podcast like this one, or maybe participating in a live or virtual summit. So there are a lot of different ways. And I, you know, I think I have 15 off the top of my head that we can dive into if you'd like to. But there are a lot of different ways that you can connect with other people who've built an audience and show up not just to use their audience, but to actually offer value so that the people who see the value in what you're sharing build that no they can trust factor with you quicker and then they join your ecosystem. So tell us a little bit about what we need to have ready. How do you know that it's time to start looking at this as an option? Well, I mean, number one, it's the time to start looking. This is an option is right away. I think a lot of people feel like, oh, publicity, exposure, visibility. I'll do that later on. But fun story with me being a publicist my entire 20 year career, when I launched my online business, I forgot that I needed to make sure that I got my launch in front of qualified leads and didn't just post it on Facebook in front of my friends and family because they cheered me on. They gave me likes, but they weren't buying my product. So (laughs) even if you're just getting started, you cannot afford to be the best kept secret. So if nobody knows about you, they can't work with work with you. So no matter what stage of the game you're in, maybe you're going to be focused on awareness, maybe you're focusing on buzz, maybe you're focusing on credibility, but we always need to be bringing leads back to the top of that funnel. Yes. Okay. So some people out there maybe don't have a funnel yet or think that they don't. But even if you're just starting out, 
you're inviting people to come in, even just to a consult to work with you. That is a funnel. Yeah. That is a way that you're getting someone to take one first step with you, add some value, get to know them more deeply and invite them to take a next step with you. That is the basis of a funnel. So I just want to take that. I'm a beginner. I don't have a funnel. I don't know how this works thing. If you're ready to receive clients and you have a way to bring them into um, getting to know, like, and trust you in any way, even if it's just a consultation, that is that counts. <laughs> That's a funnel. That's something you could definitely like you could gain from having more people join you even in just that way. Um, so you're ready already. That's the message that I'm getting. Whoever's out there listening, if you have a business and you want to serve more clients, you're already ready to start getting this exposure. So what are some ways to take those first steps to start moving into that? What do we, what kind of, you were talking about maybe giving homework, what kind of homework do we need to start doing or having or giving to make this an easier next step? So one of the, the the first question you just asked me that I'm going to circle back to is what do we actually need to have ready to be able to get our kind of exposure? So I always teach my clients how to build a media kit. And I promise this is not going to be a big, huge homework project. You can make it that way or it can be simple. Um, when you are making that request to someone, whether it's an editor of a website, the host of a podcast or the um, booker for a live event, they're going to need some assets for you to be able to consider you. So if you can put yourself in a position where you look super pro, that's always going to help you get your foot in the door. So when I'm talking about creating a media kit, that can be like as much as a page on your website. But here's how simple it can be, because I want it to be something anyone can do after listening to this episode. So when you're putting your media kit together, and what I mean by that is literally as simple as a folder that's shareable in Google Drive or in Dropbox, you're going to want to put in a few assets in there so people can promote you and share you and get a sense of you. So that'll include high res images. Um, it's always great to have a headshot. If you have a full length one, that's fantastic. So any promo materials have your image available. Having your bio put together so you can have a short 25 word bio, a 75 word bio and a 150 word bio that's short, medium and long. So when it's audio content, like you read my bio at the beginning of this one, that was probably about a 75 word because we don't want to make it too long. Um, but for different instances, you might need different lengths of bio. So that's something great to have as well. Um, another thing that I recommend is having some sort or somewhere to direct people once they've listened to you and once they've liked you. So maybe you've already got a lead magnet created where you collect somebody's name and email address in exchange for a valuable piece of information. If you don't have that just yet, you can also direct people to a website or to your Instagram bio or to your Facebook community, however you interact with people. So really primarily, even just getting started with your bio and your headshot is one of those things that's going to make you look so pro. If you reach out to someone, they're like, yeah, I like it. Fantastic. Well, here's a to all the information you're going to need from the jump, that's going to leave someone on the receiving end thinking, wow, this person is so easy to work with. They're so prepared. And then that just puts you in this really fantastic position to build that relationship, to open up second opportunities and become a recurring guest expert. So just having a handful of ducks in a row is going to put you in a good position. Yes. Um, I, I want to talk about this because I have two podcasts. I have a blog. I have a lot of platforms that I'm showing up in, and putting content out onto. And there are no guest blogs on my blog. I'm a writer, so I kind of use that as my domain. I have guest blogs on other people's platforms, but people still email me and ask if they can do a guest blog on my website. So can we talk a little bit about the due diligence of like doing your research a little bit in the part in the part of the process where you're approaching new people or you're approaching a platform that you'd like to be on that you think matches your audience, what kind of information should we be researching about these platforms or what kind of um, research should we do be doing just to find the places we want to interact with? Yeah. So let, let's do a little bit of story time. I'll tell a, an example of how this worked for me back in 2018 and the relationship that grew of it. So when I first got started in online business, my primary audience was health, fitness, and wellness professionals. And I remember I would join Facebook groups that were for health, fitness, and wellness professionals. To be clear, I was not in there posting like a jerk, trying to spam clients by any means. I only wanted to be a fly on the wall and listen. So one of the communities that I joined belongs to a woman named Kathleen Labris, and her company is, I think, healthcoachsolutions.net. So I was hanging out in the group. I was seeing the comments. I was seeing what people were struggling with. And I would see over and over again, members of her community 
community saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing content, but I'm not getting more leads. I need a new way to reach more people. And so I actually sent a direct message to Kathleen, the administrator of the group who I had never communicated with before. And I just briefly introduced myself and I said something along the lines of, hey, Kathleen, it's Lisa, nice to meet you. I'm a publicist for health, fitness and wellness entrepreneurs. I've been a member of your community and I have seen at least five people asking questions about how to get visibility obviously as a publicist, I have some ideas. Would it be helpful for your community if I did a guest post or maybe a Facebook Live with you and we could talk about a few different ways to be able to get exposure? And she said yes to that because I didn't come in and say, hey, Kathleen, I have a six-month group coaching program. Can I come in and talk about it? No, I led with value. I wanted to contribute. So I didn't get, I didn't ask, I didn't take, I gave. And that kind of coincides with uh, the conversation we were having before we turned the podcast on. So that was warmly received by Kathleen. Um, if I... I think I probably would have checked out her website. I'm not sure if she had guest blog posts on there or not. Um, I probably, depending on the platform, I hey, there's always going to be a first. I see you no know, Carmen making the ask. Um, so that was really received well by her. I did a guest blog post. Um, I can even tell you a little bit about what I did on the back end of that to be able to attract people to me. Um, I did a guest blog post for her, which she shared in her community. So it's very different having some random come in and say, hey, guys, look at this blog post versus the administrator saying, hey, we have this contributed blog post. So when people read the get the like top five tips on visibility, let's say on her blog, at the very bottom, there was a little byline, Lisa Simone Richards is a PR visibility strategist for health, fitness and wellness coaches. You can check her out here. Um, what I specifically said was, if you want five more tips, click here. So I use that to actually have five additional tips on my own website, on my own blog. So here's how this customer journey goes. They're struggling with visibility in Kathleen's group. She has a post with five tips on visibility. Someone who's interested clicks and reads that. If they have made their way all the way to the bottom of that blog post, because if it didn't land, they would have just clicked off. Mm -hmm. But if they made their way to the bottom, it obviously landed and supported them in some sort of way. If they wanted another five tips, they could head over to my blog. Now, when I was running Facebook ads at the time with a pixel, that was able to capture people. But I delivered more value. And then within my blog post, I embedded a lead magnet. Want to download my pitch template? Click here. So that was a way that I was able to contribute without being pushy and making it for me. If you wanted to find more, you would go down the rabbit hole and eventually get my lead magnet. Um, I think that was done in a really like in a good way, if I may say so. My generous way. Yeah. Yeah. And because of how well that approach went, that later on turned into me being on Kathleen's podcast that she co-hosts with Karen Paddock. I think I've done at least three appearances on that podcast now. We ended up doing at least two Facebook lives in her group. And that all came from me reaching out to a complete stranger, seeing where there was an opportunity to be in contribution and then develop a relationship from there. Actually, when I was in San Diego in 2018, Kathleen and I went out for lunch and that was fantastic. So it's so cool to see that just by paying attention to where your ideal client is hanging out, listening to see what they're struggling with and showing up with value, not with like, how can I get something out of this is a great way to be able to attract the right people to you. But even if someone doesn't join my email list or work with me ever, my intention is always to leave people richer than they came. And I think that can genuinely come across and translate in an ask to do a guest blog post in a pitch to be on someone's podcast. People can feel your intention. So really root down into what do I want to create from this? Make it not about yourself. And then that's a really good way to actually get that foot in the door. Yeah. And what I'm hearing is you actually hung out in that group to see, are my services, is my expertise useful here? Can I help fill a gap where this person, the leader of that group, wanted to serve that audience? And she, you noticed that an, a question was going unanswered that you had an answer to. So it's like you're saying, hey, I see a gap here that I would love to help you fill, not out of how can I get your clients to be my clients, but out of, I would love to support you in adding value to your audience in a deeper way. And that just hits different. It's just a different experience on the receiving end as a leader of that group and on the receiving end as the people in that group receiving that information. It's like, oh, this is here for me, not here to get me, which is a different vibe. Absolutely. Like we've all been members of groups or even hosted our own groups where we see people like drop in little comments and posts where, you know, it's not like this is meant to be supportive. This is a not I want to say a trap, but this is a way for me to get into your DMs and sol solicit you from this community. Yeah. And people can feel that a mile away. They totally can. Yeah. And it 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 
feels different even in the messaging process the way that you approach that leader of the group can come from that place of generosity and it's really not that hard to do a little bit of the homework join the groups where you think that your people are hanging out to see where that information is yes it takes longer than just blind messaging someone but the difference energetically of how it's received and the difference of the potential to co-create in that space after the fact is so much bigger so yeah go if ahead. i can add on to that i'd also like to highlight the speed of trust that's created like how much trust do you have for a rando posting something asking them to like you know asking something of you versus you've joined this person's community you're listening to their podcast like you have a sense of no like and trust factor for that leader so that they're just in essence transferring it to me because they're giving me that endorsement hey look at this post that lisa's contributed hey listen to this episode that lisa's on it's not me being like hey look at me i'm awesome please pay attention to me it's someone that they've already got a relationship endorsing me so it makes that no like and trust process build even faster than if i were to do a cold ad on facebook or a cold spam message to somebody's dm yeah. Let's talk about the workload of this a little bit because we're talking about, hey, do your homework and like you're already running a business that maybe is overwhelming because of all the things you're trying to do and create and make happen. So how do you manage? I mean, I know I'm running two podcasts in addition to all the programs and courses that I'm launching and running and showing up on social media. I'm doing a lot and I manage that um, the best that I can by having support and by automating stuff. But what are some of the things to keep in mind when people are adding this new, maybe new tactic to their plate? What are some ways that they can streamline their processes or how can they support themselves or get supported so that it's not such a huge undertaking or it doesn't feel like one? Yeah, I think if we could drill it down to its simplest form, because there's like, like I was saying before, at least 15 ways that I can think of off the top of my head to be able to get exposure. So what I would instruct somebody to do what I would share an offer with them is number one, get in touch with someone who is your ideal client avatar who you've worked with before, and they were fantastic, and you want more clients like them, or someone that you know, would be an incredible client, ask them when you're looking for information on visibility, for example, where do you turn to for that, and let them tell you what podcasts they are listening to what influencers they're following where they're paying attention. And what I would do is, you know, ask a few people because we can't just ask one and think that's a be all end all if you can ask five, yes, I'm asking for your time to do this, but the research is going to make the outcome come way better. If you can ask at least five, maybe even 10 people what those outlets are, fingers crossed, you're going to hear some things repeated over and over again. And that's going to highlight for you, okay, this is a place that I can go to find my the person that I want to be in touch with. Um, so that's probably, probably what I'd recommend as a first step. And to even make it simple, um, I'm, I'm a big believer in consistency. Doing something once isn't necessarily going to generate the result. I like to teach my clients to have what I call a healthy media mix. People like to consume content differently, whether that's reading it, listening to it, or watching it. So if you can find at least one way to show up in a written context, one way to show up on audio, and one way to show up visual, that could be a guest blog post, it could be a podcast, and going live on someone's Facebook group. This way, no matter how people like to consume content, you're showing up in multiple ways. Of course, any opportunities that you get, you're sharing on your platform so that you can support the person who's given you access as well. Well, and um, this is a way that number one, you can reach more people in a different way. Number two, no matter how someone likes to consume content, you're satisfying that. But also number three, I don't know about you, but I don't take out my credit card to spend thousands of dollars to work with somebody without doing my homework first. Like you better believe I'm going to go on Google. I'm going to creep your name. I'm going to creep your company. I'm going to do a little bit of research. So how powerful is it when you're showing up, not just on your own platforms, but you're showing up on other people's platforms over and over again. And that just flips a little switch that says, okay, this is isn't just Joe Blow coach, like this is somebody who has, um, ex who has um, a certain level of expert authority, and that they're showing up in different places. So it builds that sense of trust, helping someone feel like, okay, I feel safer and confident making this investment, because I can see that this person is a leader in their industry. Yeah. And building that expert authority, as you call it, is something we have the power to expand, we have the power to get ourselves out there to do a little bit of that homework to show up on those platforms so that when somebody Googles you or when somebody's like, I think I'm leaning in, but like, is this the right move? There's just so much data, so much information supporting that 
other people know, like, and trust you, which means you are more know, like, and trustable than the average Joe Blow coach. <laughs> so it's worth doing. It's so worth doing. Um, I actually had the fun experience of hanging out with my nephew on a playground and some kid said something snarky to him and he said, oh, yeah, well, my aunt's famous. You can find her on Google. And I was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know if that makes me famous, but in the eyes of a 10 year old, it did. And that counts for something too. <laughs> it's so funny. I remember one time, like I Google myself on the regular because I'm doing a lot of things to put myself out there. And one time I get, I don't know why, but my mom Googled me and she called me. She's like, Lisa, do you know how much stuff there is about you on the internet? And she was like, <laughs> very paro about it. And I was like, no, that's great. I do that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I want to be findable. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, what else do we need to know? What else do we need to keep in mind? What are the first steps to start moving towards more of this? Like, yeah. So one thing I was saying before, you know, we talked about that media mix going for written audio and visual media and to make it even less overwhelming for people. Where do you shine the most? Are you a skilled writer? Are you a wonderful conversationalist? Or do you have only child syndrome like me and you love to dance out on a stage in front of hundreds of people and be like, hey, everyone, put your phones down. I'm here. Let's pay attention to me. <laughs> so lean into whatever that strength may be and go all in. Let's say you're a great conversationalist and you're like, I think podcasts would be the right avenue for me. Rather than doing like, you know, one podcast here and one audio search there and one visual opportunity there, why not just find 10 podcasts that could potentially be a good fit for you, do the research, send them a pitch and create a lather, rinse, repeat strategy that you can do over and over again. I'm always super conscious. I'm a publicist. I love doing this stuff all day. And business owners have a lot of different things that they're going that are taking up their space and their time every single day. So if you can find one thing that you're really good at and drill in for that for let's say a month, two months months and then maybe move on to something else once you've got that in the rhythm and in the flow. But the, the key word, no matter if you're going to do all podcasts all the time, or you're going to try and do a little bit of A, B, and C, keywords always consistency. So um, I will acknowledge I took a summer break. It is September now, so we get to be serious again. But it was my consistent habit that on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. while I was watching the Kardashians, love them or hate them, um, I would send 10 podcast pitches and I did it every single week. Um, it became an easy strategy. It was lather, rinse, repeat because I was doing it all the time. It didn't take any extra brain work from me. And just that consistency allowed me to start booking somewhere between 10 and 12 podcast interviews every month, which now it's, you know, over the course of the year, that's 120 audience, audiences I get exposure to. That's 120 incredible people that I get to meet. So that's how I take that strategy and just make it a, a no brainer, if you will. Yeah, I love that idea of stacking your your productivity too. I'm like already sitting on the couch doing this one thing. I may as well add this other thing to it because you probably don't need to catch every single minute of the Kardashians if we're being honest. You can you can email during that. Um, no offense to them. But uh, I want to add one more thing, which I think you and I both do really well, which is once you make a relationship like that, don't let it just be one and done dead in the water, which I really appreciate, which is why I'm having you back on the show. And also you and I have sent each other multiple contacts that usually when you get into the world of being on a podcast or doing a guest blog, connect with that leader, connect with that platform host and see a... What kind of people would they like to be connected to? Who do you have in your network or your community that would be another good contribution to their world? And ask them, who can they connect you with? Who else do they know that may have a platform or a show or serve a similar audience that you should build a relationship with and do some of that follow-up due diligence as well because you don't have to have only cold people that you're contacting. There is like beautiful community inside of the people who are building platforms like this that you can create joint venture or affiliate partnerships with, that you can create like mutually uh, beneficial guest opportunities with. And that follow-up aspect actually just makes the job so much easier. I would rather have somebody on my show that Lisa sent to me and, and knows is legitimate and like inspiring than have somebody cold contact me most of the time. I'd rather have it through someone I know. 
And I think the, the word that you said there that I leaned into the most was contribution. Like, I feel like this conversation is really centering around contribution, being of value, being generous, being in that giving space. Um, even if I can share another story, just to piggyback off of what you said, um, I remember reaching out to a woman named Abby Herman, <clears throat> excuse me, Abby Herman. She has a podcast called The Content Experiment. And I pitched her a few years ago to be on her show. And she said yes. And we had such a great relationship. We stayed in touch. We kept those communications going that later on down the line, we ended up being ended up being joint venture partners and we co-sold two of our courses together. I connected her with Christina Jandali when she was working on her summit. And I was like, oh, you know who could be a good fit for your summit, Christina? I met this woman named Abby Herman and she would be great. And then Abby got in on that event. So it's so powerful that you can take one relationship and that you, just by nurturing it and watering it, like more opportunities can grow and grow from it. So if there's something that I would pat self on back and say that I'm skilled at, um, I'm really good at creating recurring guest experts. Like when my clients go on television, they get asked to come back again and again and again. So it's not like they have to start from the ground up every single time. They're just really reinforcing their value, showing up in front of the same audience, um, creating that no like and trust factor, because someone doesn't just buy after hearing you once, but if they've seen you multiple times, that really does you a service uh, down the line. Yeah. And builds that that lean in factor too of I, okay this person keeps showing up in my world it, it's time to look deeper at what they're offering that's literally how i feel right now there's oh gosh i'm gonna butcher this so badly there's some movie coming out right now with florence Pugh in it don't Not something sure. or the other i okay if someone google it you guys know what i'm talking about but this is around the concept of building buzz well i can't tell you the name of the movie right now it's like harry styles chris pine florence Hugh, olivia wilde all I'm hearing about is the PR disaster behind this thing for the last few days. And now I'm just like, what is this movie? Like, I don't keep, I'm not even a movie person, but I'm like, yeah. I'm seeing my friends post about it on Instagram. It's showing up in my news feed. And it's gotten me to the point that I'm like, what is this movie about? Should I see it? So it's right. interesting that you need to, I don't want to say hit someone over the head with a hammer 17 times for them to take action. But people do need to hear from you over and over again. And then eventually it pushes them into action. Yeah. And I think I, I'll speak to the spiritual women entrepreneur side of this podcast too. Oftentimes when we see something enough, we start to wonder, okay, is this a message for me? Is this a sign that I'm supposed to go in this direction or lean into this question or find more support from this person? And I think it's true. People, people and things and ideas come into our sphere enough times and it starts to resonate and, and seem like it's for us. And so we can actually facilitate being showing up enough times that people have the opportunity to feel that resonance and to lean in towards it. So um, that's something that A is magical and B also we can make happen. <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. And I love that you show people how to do that. So you have a program that you uh, teach people this lather, rinse, repeat formula. We tell us a little bit about, about that. You know, it's actually funny that you're actually asking me about it because I'm like, I'm actually not even really super enrolling in it right now. Um, but I do have a light version um, called the Online Visibility Accelerator Light. And I was sharing with you and your listeners earlier that I've been doing PR for 20 years. It's what I know inside and out. And I have crammed everything I've learned in 20 years into this program where I teach people my five P's for positioning, publicity, and profit. And I'll share really briefly what it is. Uh, number one, we need to pick our perfect client. Who is that person that we need to speak to? Number two, we need to position ourselves as a solution. Once we know who that ideal client avatar is and what they're struggling with, we need to make sure we're showing up as a solution. No one is buying your course or mastermind just because you launched it. It's because it solves a problem for them. So how do we take what we're doing and massage it and communicate it in a way that they're like, that is what I'm looking for. So once you've positioned yourself as a solution, then I teach people, how do you pick the right platform? We said that there are written platforms, audio platforms platforms and visual platforms. And I share with people, here's how you figure out what makes sense for you. And here's how you find the right outlets. The fourth thing I teach in there is how do you pitch for publicity? You and I have talked on and on again and how it's not about saying, hey, I have a six month program. Can I come on your podcast? No. How do you come up with a mass message that has value that leads with um, generosity so people do want to invite you to their platforms? And then once you've had that interview, once you've had that opportunity, number five is all about how do you turn publicity into 
profit? Um, how do you take that visibility that you're getting to position yourself as the expert in your industry? The example I always like to think of is when I go to the grocery store, I can choose between Heinz ketchup or the no-name store brand ketchup. And while the Heinz is a little more premium, it costs a little bit more, I'm willing to spend the extra 20 cents or dollar or whatever it is on the name brand. How do we make you that name brand so that you're not in a position where you're like just trying to get clients because you're the cheapest option? Um, so that's what I like to teach people within the online visibility accelerator. Um, I don't have an easy link for it. Um, but if you go to the online visibility accelerator.com, you'll see what the Folsom program looks like. And if you DM me on Instagram at Lisa Simone Richards, I can share with you the OVA light program. And Molly, I'll give you a link to it if you want to include that in the show notes as well. Yeah, we'll put that link in the show notes for people so they can check it out. Awesome. Well, you shared so much magic again on this episode. Um, definitely, if you guys didn't go back and listen to the first one, go check out the other episode with Lisa Simone Richards because it was also very valuable and insightful. And I always ask this at the end, are there any last words of wisdom that you want to leave people with? Oh, the thing that I feel like I probably said this on the last episode too. So good reinforcement. We need to hear things yeah. multiple times. Um, if you just invested 30 minutes in listening to this, don't let it just be like, you know what? That was a great episode. No, no, no. What was the number one thing that landed with you from this conversation? Was it to maybe join some groups where our clients are hanging out so you can be a fly on the wall? Is it to um, start looking for people who you might want to do a Facebook Live with? Pick one thing that we talked about and put it into action because that can lead to transformation. I always love that I was on another podcast, The Business of Blogging, I believe it was called. And just through that podcast, someone took action from what we talked about and she booked a TV segment without paying me a dollar she got ex exposure in front of thousands of people so don't just take for granted that molly and i share great information with you pick the thing that you're going to put into action and then let it create transformation for you yes and if you need to do it during watching the kardashians then do that batch it stack your actions whatever you have to do to stay motivated and get that stuff done because it's worth it's worth implementing especially if you're still listening to this episode you may have not even tapped into the power of what you taking one action like this can do for you, can do for your business, can do for the clients who are waiting for you to show up in their world. So don't sleep on something that's pinging you to start trying. It's that experimentation, that curiosity, that willingness to do something new and different that can really change like catalyze some change in your life. So awesome. Thank you, Lisa, for all the magic that you shared. And yeah, hopefully everybody is taking an action item away from this and working on it, getting it done. And we are both here to support you in processes like that. If you feel like you're just stuck and you need accountability, support, motivation, we've got your back. And again, that link will be in the show notes. So whatever happens out there, keep asking big questions, keep taking bold action because you are here for a reason. We'll see you next week for another episode of Tactical Magic. Bye.